MicroATX is a platform that gets very little love, but for a user who wants a compact PC, but doesn't want to spend a fortune on ITX components, then this can be a great compromise. So today I want to show you how to build a good looking yet compact MATX gaming PC that won't break the bank, but offers incredible 1440p gaming performance. So let me introduce a small and incredibly good value case that I picked up on Amazon for a mere £45. This gets you an incredibly compact MATX case that's easily transportable thanks to its robust carry handle. It has a tempered glass side panel so we can show off those internals, front ports, and a unique way to easily access the internals, which makes building in this case pretty easy. Now the actual case itself is available in black or white, but I have a real obsession with white at the moment. So this build is gonna be an all white build with a splash of RGB. And to start that off, I'm gonna replace the actual white stock fans that came with the case with some Corsair RGB white 120 millimeter fans. Now, if you decide to buy these fans, make sure you pick up the three pack, which also includes the necessary RGB cables and the actual RGB hub. Now I'm gonna link it down below as with all the other components in this build. And if you do buy anything, we get a very small kickback at no cost to you, which does help keep this channel going. Now the RGB fans will increase the cost of this build, so if you are on a budget, maybe just stick to those stock fans. But once we've actually just screwed in the new fans, it's time to build up the actual motherboard itself before fitting it into the case. And as this is gonna be an all AMD build, we're gonna be choosing a great value B650 board from MSI. This board was only 140 pounds in the UK, so almost half the price of a good ITX B650 board. And being slightly larger than ITX, we get a lot more features, such as four RAM slots instead of the two on an ITX. We also get two M.2 connectors that are easily accessible with heat plates, one X16 slot, plus two X1 slots. We also get a ton more fan and USB headers than you do on an ITX, filling up that extra size of the board. Also, despite being so much cheaper than an ITX version, we get an incredibly great looking board with silver heat sinks, which should match well with our white theme. Now for the CPU, I've chosen the Ryzen 5 7600X. This is a six core 12 thread CPU that despite being well priced, gives you incredible gaming performance with clocks well over five gigahertz. And six cores is still the sweet spot for gaming in my opinion. If you do also plan to use the PC for a lot of heavy CPU work, then you might wanna consider an Intel maybe 14600K instead it will use more power, but it does have better multi-threaded performance thanks to those extra efficiency cores. Now, when you order your CPU, I would check both the 7600 and the 7600X prices. Now, I got the X for almost the same price as the standard 7600. But if in your region there's a large price difference, then just get the standard 7600. They're essentially the same CPU. And with a bit of tweaking, you can get pretty much 7600X performance from that 7600. Now, before we install a large CPU cooler on top of this CPU, it's a good time to insert the SSD so it's easy to get to. And for this build, we're gonna be using the Western Digital SN850X 2TB. This is an incredibly fast drive, and 2TB is a good amount of space for my games library and the OS. We do also have that spare M.2 slot, so we can add another drive later down the line should I run out of space. So now that's installed, let's look at the CPU cooler. And because we have plenty of clearance in this MATX case, we bought the Thermorite Silver Soul 135 White Dual Tower Air Cooler. This CPU cooler is gonna be a good match with the 7600, but there is even more clearance in this case should you wish to get an even bigger cooler. Now the reason I always choose Thermorite coolers at the moment is they are just a great mix of performance and price. This large cooler was only 30 pounds in the UK. An equivalent Noctua heatsink would have been more than double that price. Also, mounting this cooler is very easy, especially on the AM5 platform. We just screw down the mounting plates directly into the original AM5 mounting holes. Apply the thermal paste, and I do like to use the P method, then carefully screw down the heatsink with a long screwdriver. I always alternate a couple of turns on each screw to get an even spread of the paste as we tighten that cooler down. Next, we put on the 120 millimeter fan and plug it into its fan connector on the CPU header of the motherboard. Now lastly, to build up this motherboard, we just need to add the RAM, and for this build, we've bought a nice 32 gigabyte white RGB Corsair Vengeance 6000 megahertz kit. Now this 6000 megahertz kit will pair perfectly with the CPU, and it also looks good too with that RGB. But if you wanna save a few pounds, you can buy the non-RGB version, which is about 10 pound odd cheaper. So with a motherboard fully built up, we can carefully slide it home into the case. Now make sure you take your time when you do this and move any of the cables out of the way. Once you've slid the motherboard into place, screw it down with the relevant screws, then you connect your front and rear fans, audio header, front USB connectors, and the power switch. 
So next we need to install the PSU. Now this case can take a full size HX or SFX PSUs. But as we want to install a huge graphics card, we chose an SFX L PSU to make the cable management easier. Now I'm going to be honest here and tell you that I bought the most ridiculously priced PSU I could just because it's white and had an RGB fan. So here it is, the ASUS ROG Loki 850W Platinum. This is a gorgeous looking power supply available in white and black and this white version even has white cables and I really wanted that to match this build. It did cost me £240 in the UK though, so if you're on a budget I would definitely recommend that you get the Corsair SF750 instead. Or if you do particularly want the white, there's also the Lian Li SP750. Anyway, let's get this PSU mounted. And because it is designed for an ATX, we're going to use the SFX mounting brackets that converts it to ATX size that comes in the PSU box. Once we then attach the PSU mounting case, we do need to attach the PSU cables. Now, as with all compact builds, only install the actual power supply cables that you're going to use. It's very tempted to clip all the cables in just in case, but trust me when I say, once you start cable tidying it, you're going to regret it. Now before I slide the PSU into the case, I'm going to just plug in the motherboard 8 pin and 24 pin power connectors to the motherboard so that it's easier then once the power supply is in place. So we slide that in, screw the PSU down and do a little bit of cable tidying ready to now insert the GPU. And make sure you move the GPU cables to one side ready for this next step. Now talking of the graphics card, and for this build we've chosen the Radeon 7900 GRE. Now this is a fair price card at about £500 in the UK that performs way better than the RTX 4070 which is often costing more. Now the model we chose was the ASRock Steel Legend. This is slightly more than the standard models, it comes in at £540, but we wanted a white card with RGB and this card didn't disappoint. It is very large though, but fortunately because we've got an MATX case, size is not a problem. So with all your cables tied out of the way, we're going to slot home this card and screw it down with the two screws. We then just add in the two 8-pin PCIe cables to power the graphics card and make sure we tidy those cables away. Now this card is so large, it does block the bottom X1 PCI slot, but fortunately you do still have one more X1 slot above the graphics card should you want to add another card later. So with the PC built, let's put the side panel back on and fire it up. And for testing, I'm going to be using my Alienware 34-inch ultrawide OLED monitor. Now this is a 3440 by 1440 display and this GPU has absolutely no problem driving it. Starting with the finals, at max settings, we were getting well over 120 frames per second and temps remained in check throughout the entire time thanks to the larger chassis over an ITX system. The CPU temps do get into the late 70s but this is very normal with a 7600 range but they boost over 5 GHz so you kind of understand it. Now you can also adjust the PBO to improve the temperatures but I haven't even needed to do that. Moving over to Battlefield, and again, 3440 by 1440 high settings were no issue at all, running well over 100 frames per second, and I'm always amazed at how good this game looks, especially on this OLED display. We then fired up Apex Legends, which didn't even cause the machine to break a sweat. Then finally Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is a bit more demanding. But even after hours of gaming, the system temperatures remained in check, even with its whisper quiet 37 decibel fan noise meaning that it won't be annoying when this case is sitting on the desk right beside you. So overall, I'm incredibly pleased with this case. It's an incredible price, and being MATX gives you more expansion for the future, and all the components are cheaper than ITX. And this is still a very compact case still, and with a carry handle, it's very easily transportable. So there we go, this is my first Micro ATX build on the channel, and I'm really impressed with it, especially now we're getting some good, compact Micro ATX cases. And I certainly want to try some more Micro ATX in the future. Now as always, I'd love to know what you guys think of this build. Could I have done it differently? Would you like to see anything else instead? Put your comments down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.